Epistle greetings to our viewers at home. We'd like to thank the Lord for his faithfulness, for his mercy, for keeping us through this perilous time. He has provided, even if the economy around us is tough, he has kept his promise. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. He has kept his promise. You will not beg for bread. Yeah. We thank him and give him praise this morning. We'd like to welcome you to the Great Controversy series. We are looking at the book Great Controversy in depth. We want to extract all the gems in that book so that we may see how the Lord seeks to shed light to us and give us hope in these perilous times. With me here today is Brother Francois, Brother Matonsela, Brother Mutle, and Brother Nube. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Mutle will pray for us. We invite you, Eternal Father, as we embark upon the work of explicating the wonderful truths in the book, The Great Controversy. May your Holy Spirit lead and guide us, touch us, also bless the viewers at home. In the powerful name of my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome once, up, once again. The book reader is not published to tell us there is sin, war, and misery in this world. We know that too well. This book is not published to tell us there is irreconcilable controversy between darkness and light, sin and righteousness, wrong and right, death and life. In our hearts, we know that too well. And too many a time, we've been actors and actresses on this podium. Now, some of us have asked ourselves, when did the controversy start? When is it going to end? Yeah. Am I part of the controversy? The writer of this book seeks to give us answers so that we may prepare for the second coming of the Lord with marks, with markers set on our way mm. so that we don't fall by the wayside. This book opens with the sad closing scenes of Jerusalem, the beloved city of God that he had chosen, set aside on a, on a mission to spread the gospel to all the people around. Yet for some reason, because truth gave way to error, they were set aside because they decided to reject the men of Calvary. Yeah. Mm. On the highway of life, nations have risen, nations have fallen, mm. Christians have been persecuted, they've been scorched, yet God all, all, all the way has had that special yeah. group that has kept the truth pure. Mm -hmm. We shall forever keep it pure throughout the ages as we prepare for his second coming. Mm -hmm. Our text for reading today comes from Luke chapter 19, verses 42 to 44, I will read in your hearing. Amen. Saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, by now they are hid from thy, thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. And they shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Mm. And then Jesus said to Jerusalem, If thou hast known your time of visitation, if thou had known mm. when these things should happen, not because they had been hidden from mm. their sight, but because they did not hasten to listen to the words of the Lord yeah. until probation was closed on that beloved city. Uh, I just want to probably uh, talk about this city, uh, you know, these people who are there, because you can't have a city which is actually empty. So a city is always being having people there. Uh, I just want to see these people which actually are spoken as Jerusalem, but these were actually very close people of God, whom that God has entered into a covenant relationship with them. And when you go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 17 to 19, the Bible is speaking about God speaking to Israel, uh, which is actually Jerusalem. He says this word, uh, words, it says, uh, Thou hast avouched the Lord this day uh, to be thy God, and, thy, and, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. Verse, 20, uh, verse 9, 18, And the Lord hath avouched thee this day. So you can see it's, it's they actually avouched to, go, avouched to God, and God has avouched to them. Mm. So there was this, you know, 
going and forth of agreement between you know Israel or children of Israel and God. So verse 18 it, it, say, it says there and and the Lord hath avouched uh, thee this day uh, to be his peculiar people as he hath promised thee that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to make thee higher above all nations which he hath made in praise in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath promised thee. So when we are talking about this city, we are talking about special people okay. that are so close to God, and God has entered into a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. And the reason why God has entered, and entered into a relationship with them is because God wanted to lift them higher than all the nations. You know, what is interesting is, had Israel kept to the covenant that they had with God, Oh yes. God would have made them a spectacle Amen. Mm. of the ancient world. Amen. But unfortunately, they could not hack into the covenant stipulations mm. in their relationship with God. And we can practicalize that, Sister Mube, and say in a marriage setup, we enter into a covenant. Mm. Mm. And the stipulations or the requirements of the covenant practically maintain the relationship between two parties. For mm. instance, if you are in a marriage setup, you know that you're not supposed to see other people. Mm. And if you don't do that, there's mm. peace, there's love in the home. But the minute you break that vow, yes. yeah. and you bring other people, third parties, fourth parties, yeah. into oh, yeah. the marriage setup, oh, yeah. you diminish the relationship. Okay. And I think that's, that's the kind of relationship that God wanted to have with Israel. Oh, but yeah. unfortunately, Israel went out whoring mm -hmm. against other gods. Mm. Thus breaking the covenant relationship that they had with God. Oh, yeah. Because when we look at Luke chapter 21, we are seeing the height yeah. of their disobedience, of yeah. their unfaithfulness. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the height of everything. But yeah. you know, I just don't want to rush the narrative. I just want to allow it to unfold mm -hmm. so yeah. we can see the beauty. <laughs> my, my take comes um, in here. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, sister. You, you see the context of um, verse 41. Hmm. If you had known things that would bring you peace, mm. uh, mm. the emphasis on this is peace. Mm. So you see, uh, mm. because uh, Israel continued in his aspect of doing things, even mm. if God was saying, no, let's not go that route, but they continued. Yeah. And you see, God continues, if you look at verse 41, it says, Jesus stood mm. there and wept over the city. Mm. Yeah. The emphasis is on them. God is opening his, all the trend. This city will not have been destroyed. Yeah. They just taken heed of. So what is happening here, you would see even the practical aspect. Uh, our country, the world in general, there's no peace. Mm. And the peace begins with the relationship between me and God. Mm. And the moment there is no relationship there, the peace is not there, mm. then I start hating even myself. Mm. So you find a situation where I'll kill everybody because there's no peace, no link. So we must be linking to God so that things can flow. And in this aspect, this is very critical. Mm, absolutely. Uh, we are tackling the book, the great controversy. And what we find there, as we read it about the destruction of Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah. Why the destruction of mm. Jerusalem? And the book, it reveals the, the ultimate plan of God Amen. for mankind. Mm. And th this is a masterful volume. Okay. It, it, it's a thrilling presentation mm -hmm. of the past, of the present, and the future. Yes. Mm. It's it got this inspiration. It, it's, it's a book. Everyone must have it. This is what it has been said. So that as we have said all these things, people must know this truth is from this book. Mm. As we're discussing... There is no other book in the yeah. world yeah. that has been written mm. to reveal mm. this, uh, 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 the whole thing as, as the first chapter. It's, it's just talking about, as, as the sister has mentioned, mm. it starts with a very sad scene yeah. where Jesus, the Bible said, he wept. He wept. Mm. The reason why, he, you know, it was this celebration that they were having, mm. the Passover yes. celebration. Yes. And things were, were, to the people, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. But to him, yeah. he cried because he saw now that, yeah. oh, the danger yeah. is coming. coming. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. So the book gives us the whole picture of where we are as we speak. Yeah. And the book is saying a lot of things that we are going to discuss as the other uh, people will come and yeah. as we tackle certain chapters to it, and it will reveal a lot mm. because as we read it slowly but surely in it, mm. uh, there are a lot of things that will get there. Yeah. So the book, and as you have said, Christ, mm. the plan of God, giving us that inspiration to millions of people yeah. mm. who have read this book. And I will say to the people, probably it could be you as well, mm. if you can read it. It cuts everything for everyone yes. to understand yes. why God uh, you know, has, has sent the, 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 the prophet, mm. Ellen White, to write the book. Okay. Because she did, listen to this, she didn't write the book. God wrote it. God told her to write it. Mm -hmm. So everything that we get there, it's, that's why we call it the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. Mm. It's a spirit of prophecy because it doesn't come to anyone, mm. only from God. Yeah. I want us to look at this scenario. Okay. Jesus is weeping over a city yes. mm. who is, whose inhabitants are happy. They mm. see no trouble. Yes. Mm. <laughs> they are not aware yeah. what is about to befall them. Mm. Mm. It's not that they are ignorant to scripture. It yep. has been given to them. True. They have decided to reject it. Mm. If you look at the words of the writer here, she says, as Jesus was discussing the matter with the, with the disciples, they, they actually couldn't begin to comprehend yeah. mm. what Jesus is talking about. Mm. They looked at the beauty of Jerusalem yes. Yes. and the oh, beauty yes. of the temple. Yeah. Remember, mm. before David dies, he gathers all the material. Mm. Solomon yeah. built the temple yes. and God at that time had allowed, allowed the children of Israel to prosper so much mm -hmm. that the very same writer in one of her books said, if a child were to look down and pick a stone at random, yeah. chances are they would pick silver. Yeah. Yeah. That's how rich Israel was mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. A temple is made according to the instructions of heaven and mm -hmm. then at that time Jerusalem says, I sit a queen, yes. oh, yeah. I shall see no sorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just when she is saying that, the master is weeping yeah. mm. over Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This should be giving us lessons yes. mm. in the Edain, yes. uh, church, especially the Laodicean church, oh, mm. yeah. where Jesus says, you mm. think you are rich, mm. you think you are learned, mm. <laughs> yet you are naked and yeah. you are wearing filthy rags. Mm. Yes. And you know, when we look at the Jerusalem sin, I mean, it's beautiful because it begins with the beauty of the temple. Then we see all the Jews of who were dispersed. Mm. from different parts of the ancient yeah. world. They gather at the holy city for a festival, mm -hmm. the feast of the Passover. Yeah. Yeah. And I can already see the jubilant air. Yeah. And everybody is happy. Yes. Everybody is in the spirit of the festival. Mm -hmm. And Jews from different parts of the world have gathered to keep the Passover feast. Mm -hmm. And right at that solemn point, where everybody is in good spirits, high spirits, yeah. and you know, I looked at the temple and I saw that the temple is a symbol of the power of Judaism. Yeah. It is the center of the religion itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And right at the temple, and somebody, somewhere in some book, once said that there are certain particular types of feasts, mm -hmm. and there are pilgrimage feasts, mm -hmm. feasts where you have to gather at the holy city, where you cannot keep those feasts alone. That's why Jews of mm -hmm. the dispersion came together. But yeah. when I look at the solemn scene and the solemnity of the scene, Christ stands contrary to the spirit that is prevalent there. Oh, yeah. Whereas Jerusalem towers above its subjects mm. in glory and in its pride, mm. Christ weeps sort of yeah. Because Christ sees the symbol of the people who have killed his prophets, yeah. who have killed his messengers. Jerusalem had been a city that God himself created mm. for his own glory. But how long and how much mm. has God tried mm. to reach out to the city? Mm. Mm. How much in the Old Testament history yeah. did God try to cover her children, but they would not be gathered unto God? And this, they're at the point, and you know, look at, look at the Passover scene. The Passover scene is, is, is the feast, the Passover feast is the feast where there is a sacrifice. Yeah. And Christ comes as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that Christ is about to die. Yeah. But also, his weeping is connected to his death which when we look at the text is orchestrated by his people mm. using the hand of the state. Yeah. And that would be the height of Jerusalem's apostasy, mm. one that would bring upon this destruction. Mm. Thank you. This weeping program continues. But why is Jesus weeping? Number one, 
Jesus understands the history, what will happen. He actually knows he's going to Calvary. He knows everything is on trend. But why is he weeping? He looks at the trend that is set by Israel. If you look at Book of Deuteronomy, it continues to say, obey, obey, obey. But the people turn it around. Mm. That's the sequence in mm. life, really. Mm. God's word, as we're going to be learning about this book, God's word is direct. He wants us to follow a pattern. But a number of times, we get to compromise level. We seem to be wiser, and we think we can do otherwise without God. Yeah. And so, in Isaiah 51, then he comes in with the point, then he says, Israel is like a vineyard. Mm. What is it that I have not done to you as a vineyard? Mm, sure. I've done everything mm. up to a point when he comes to die. I've done everything. But this very vineyard, what does it give him? Wild grapes. Mm. So may God help us as we continue to learn to really think about these things. Mm. What is it that goes it in store for each one of us? He has a storage and he wants us to go through it and get the blessing of life. But if it doesn't work, there will be destruction coming for Jerusalem. Mm. Thank you very much. We shall be going for a break now. Please don't go away. Stay with us. We'll be joining you shortly. Welcome once again. Um, at this moment, Christ, because he is, God in incarnate looks at the history of this earth and his eye is turned back to the time of Abraham yeah. when Abraham was called to go and sacrifice his son. Mm. An unstruggling victim, a willing victim to yeah. be sacrificed. Mm. Abraham is actually stopped by an angel. Actually, it is recorded that on his way, Abraham wished for some reason he would meet some angels on that mm. particular day mm. who would tell him don't do the sacrifice. Mm. He did not meet any angels oh, yeah. until he reached the very moment when he had to sacrifice his yeah. son. Mm. An angel stops him. Yeah. That very sacrifice was an emblem Amen. Yeah. of Christ. Amen. Mm. A willing sacrifice. Yeah. Yes. Now Christ goes further. He looks at the sin of Jerusalem. He looks at Gethsemane, yeah. that is ahead of him. Mm. He looks at Calvary. Yeah. Uh, he looks at his resurrection. He looks at all the followers yeah. in time mm -hmm. up to his second coming. Mm -hmm. And Jesus then realizes how much Israel had been privileged. Yeah. Mm. And they had refused to listen to his word. Let's further look at the fact that Jesus did not give up on Israel immediately. Amen. Amen. Mm. Jesus sent messengers, mm. one after the other, yeah. like the parable in the Bible. Mm. Here is a man cultivating a tree. Mm. Mm. It does not produce any grapes. Mm. Yeah. And when the time reached for Christ to say, cut off Israel, mm. when God said, cut off Israel, Christ said, give me one more year mm. so that I may try. Mm. Mm. Not a year particularly, give me more time. Mm. So that I may send more prophets, yeah. mm. so that they might go and try and redeem the city. Yet too many a time, hey. the mm. children of Israel get yeah. back to the master what he considered as wild grapes that's that's mm. very true when, when you come to the book of matthew we, we are actually being given some you know insight um, of what is come to sending messengers and messages mm. uh, let me just read for you quickly in matthew chapter 23 um, this is the chapter that is known by christ pronouncing wars mm. upon israel and then he says what unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites mm -hmm. Because ye build uh, the tombs of the prophets mm. and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. Sure. Verse 30, it says, and say, and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, yes. we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So mm. they're, they're trying to show Christ that we are innocent. Mm. You know, there's nothing mm. wrong that we have done. Mm. Uh, this is self-deception. Self, self, so Israel, whenever you look at Israel, as you read it from the book of Psalms, chapter 48, which speaks about she was a beautiful city and so on and so forth. But that beautiful city, which was actually beautiful in as far as the structure is concerned, yes. 
people who were dwelling in the city themselves, they were not beautiful as the city was actually yeah. portraying. Absolutely. So that was a self-deception. So self-deception was actually the foundation of the nation of Israel. Now, when you go down there, um, just quickly, a couple of verses. Uh, verse 31, it says, Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, mm -hmm. that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Mm -hmm. sure. And when you come to verse 34, it says, I mean, wherefore, behold, I send un un unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and, and, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye uh, scorch in your synagogues, and persecute them from the city uh, cities to city. So already there, Christ is saying that, no, this is what it has been all along. And when you go to Second Chronicles chapter 36, this was actually the same thing that their parents were doing. Mm. And Christ says, the same thing that I have done to these individuals, you're going to do, I mean, the, your parents have done it as well. So I want to read the last verse there just to give you a glimpse what, what will be the end of it. Verse 36 says, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. So it's addressing to them, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest, hey. so you shall and thou killest. Mm -hmm. You see, so now it's not applicable to yeah. them now. Thou killest the prophet and stone, stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even mm. as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. So Christ is now getting to his climax okay. mm. of bearing with Israel. Yeah. It says, I've sent messengers, and this, this it has been going on ever since man was, was met, uh, ever since man fell into sin. God has been constantly sending messengers, sending messengers, and the whole idea of God sending messengers is to gather people back. But unfortunately, whenever you look at that, you know, in the history, you discover that people always want to stay away from the messengers. And on top of that, they'll stand against the messengers and kill. And we're going to see it as going to happen if the, the last messenger that God actually sent to Israel before Israel came to destruction. Thank you. Now, this makes me wonder about the, the spiritual aspect of things. Oh, yeah. As a people of God and you're slaying messengers that God is sending to you. Oh, okay? yeah. But you are still operating under the name of the Lord. <laughs> yes. And uh, you are very powerful in liturgy. Mm -hmm. You know, very formalist. You want things to be done mm -hmm. perfectly. You oh, do yes. your sacrifice. You spill the blood. Mm -hmm. You do everything that is required. And at this level, required by the Hebrew cultures. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's done spiritlessly. Mm -hmm. To an extent that God's own messengers are slain by his own people oh, yeah. who are worshipping him, him through rituals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. But that are spiritless. Mm. Amen. And uh, it's a burden. Man. This was a means of com communication that God was sending. Okay. <clears throat> you know, and communication of God can be sent by anyone as long as God send it. So it can be in the format of a message. When a message comes to you, it's a communication yeah. that God has sent. If you try to stand against it, what are you doing? You are mm. silencing the voice of, the, 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 of that message. So we, in our time, we are also repeating the same thing. I mean, there are three angels' messages with God is sending everywhere. What has been our reaction anyway? And what will be the reaction of many others around the world? Mm. So you can kill a prophet, which is a message of God, through the message that comes to us. And is it also possible, could it also be, that it's possible for us to be too caught up in the things of God that we no longer have space for God himself? Amen. Yeah. And we run with God's things. Yeah. But God no longer has a voice among oh, them. Yeah. And I think that's a very terrible state. To now, be. I think the sad thing is that um, the children of Israel do not only kill the prophets, mm. they even Aish. killed him who sent oh, the yeah. prophet. Yes. Yes. It again. And they even cried, yeah. let his blood be upon us and Aish. upon our children. Yeah. Okay, we look at the children, uh, children of Israel, mm. the then Israel, mm. who had Christ walk amongst them, mm. yet they could not be converted. Mm. But here is my, my point of contention. Mm. Yes, ma'am. They had no one who had gone before them so that they could see these mistakes. Mm. Now, now God says, I have recorded these things for you. Mm. As in samples. Yes, so that you might not fall in the very same pit Try. where they fail. Yeah. Yeah. But look at us. Mm. Hey. We are falling in the very same pit where mm. they fail. Yeah. Even when we have examples. And we know the end result That's of right. what is going yeah. to happen. Yeah. Yet we still choose that way anyway. Mm. And hence, the destruction of Jerusalem. Ah, say. Yes, sir. Because everything will come to that. Mm. God has said many things. Yes, mm. sir. Like you said about Deuteronomy. Yeah. 
Oh. It's just yeah. a, a T's and C's apply yeah. situation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do this, you get this. Yeah. You do this, you get this. <clears throat> it's a curse or a blessing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Now, that's where it comes to pass that the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. because my brother has said about self-deception. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that the devil self uses. Self-deception, yeah. Pride. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Arrogance. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that these people I, had in order to see Jerusalem being, mm -hmm. having everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they thought everything, it, it's, it's done. We, we, we have we are okay if we have all these things yeah. we have. Oh, so right. now I just read to, for you one of the uh, uh, captions that we have in the book. Mm. Yes, the sir. great sin of the Jews was their rejection of Christ. Okay. Mm. It says the great sin of the Christian world mm. will be their rejection of the law of God. Mm. The foundation of his government in heaven and earth. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The precepts mm. of Jehovah will be despised and set at naught. Hmm. Millions in bondage of sin, hmm. slaves of Satan doomed to suffer the second death, will refuse to listen to the words of truth yeah. sure. in that day of visitation. Hmm. Hey. Terrible blindness, hmm. strange infatuation. Ah. Ah. This is the book that hmm. gives us the energy hmm. yes, to sir. see that ah. this is the time. Hmm. Hmm. Now, we need to know that this is the time for the book to be read again by everyone who, who, anyone who have touched it, yeah. I'll pray to God to have it. I would like to invite <laughs> the viewers to page 22 of this book. Just get yourself a book and go to page 22. Okay. You can close with page 29 in what my brother was illustrating. <laughs> the first sentence says, Christ saw in Jerusalem a symbol of the world, mm. hardened in unbelief and yes. rebellion. And hastening the need for the repetitive judgments of God. Mm -hmm. So what we see in this destruction of Jerusalem is actually what is happening <clears throat> in our world, mm. in our country, as it were. Oh, yes. yeah. What is it? The unbelief, mm. rebellion against God. Oh, yeah. mm. And what is happening now, we see we have stories, gender-based violence. Mm. All these things are a symbol God is not in it. Mm. And so the abuse that comes is because this person is rebelling against the maker of humanity. Oh, yeah. Because that human being that is there is God's child. Oh, yes. So in this case, there will be destruction eventually because we have refused mm. to walk in the light of God. Verse 20, page 27, then says, uh, men did not reason. They were beyond reason. Mm. Controlled by impulse. Sure. Mm. It's infatuation, impulse. Mm. What I feel like doing, I can. Yes. Mm. And who stands before me? Nobody. Mm. No one. Mm. And our crime rates are high. This is the story. So it's time to read because this thing will not continue forever. Mm. It, is, it is now, but God will say, enough is enough. Oh, yeah. Each one of us is given a chance. Come, come. God wants to forgive us and let us go forward. Stop this trend of going the direction you desire. Mm. Yes. God has a plan. Yes. And just going to eat. That's very true, brother. I just want to give at least a verse, you know, for someone to, to see, you know, from the book of John chapter 8. There was actually this discussions going on with Jesus Christ and the Jews. Mm -hmm. Just listen to verse 41. I think of John chapter, uh, chapter 8. It says, you do the deeds of your father. Yeah. Then they said to him, this were the Jews speaking back to Christ. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father. Okay. God. Mm-hmm. Now, listen to how Christ is going to tell them. Verse 44, it says, You are of your, of your father the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Mm. So again, coming back, you know, while they're claiming to be the children of God, okay. mm -hmm. they were under the power of the devil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Anyone that stands against the message, anyone stands against the voice of God, anyone stands against the means of communication that God sends, mm -hmm. is not under the, under the power of God at all. Mm -hmm. There are many churches outside there who are preaching brilliant messages, mm -hmm. but when they are actually being confronted with the message that will bring their whatever they know to a certain space of reasoning, you'll find this strong opposition going on. And yeah. Christ actually faced that when he came to the children of Israel, who were claiming to be the people of God, but when Christ entered into his ministry, okay. they were the ones opposing and tried to kill him, to all these kind of things. Mm. And Christ says, the reason why you're doing whatever you're doing yeah. is not because you're actually under the auspices of the Holy Spirit. That's yeah. not true. Mm. You're under 
the power of the devil and yeah. the devil has become your father so it's yeah. true you can claim to be whatever you are and having all the denomination pride mm. that does not make you to be a child of god yeah. what yeah. makes you a child of god is the spirit that leads you mm. either the spirit of god or the spirit of the devil and how does it manifest mm. through the rejection of the truth of god yeah. Mm. As Jesus continues to discuss with his disciples, yes. he indicates to them, looking at the beauty of the temple, as you are looking at that building over there, mm. hey. when the time of your visitation has yeah. come, no stone will be left yeah. on top oh, of another. Oh, yes. Yeah. At that yeah. moment, they couldn't begin to comprehend mm. what he is saying. Not only did he say that, yeah. he right. then puts it in contrast with mm. the second temple that shall be built. Mm. Mm. He says, the glory of the second yeah. shall surpass the first. Oh, yes. Not the building, yeah. but the, the glory. glory. Yes. <laughs> yes. In the dedication of the first temple, yeah. mm. God is seen as a cloud oh, yes. over the temple. Eish. Fire falls from, yeah. fire falls from heaven yeah. to burn the sacrifice mm -hmm. on that day. Mm -hmm. So the children of Israel have it as a fact that the presence of God is amongst is us. Mm -hmm. The temple is beautiful, mm -hmm. but the second one yeah. is built out of tears. Mm -hmm. When they have nothing, because they didn't heed yeah. the signals, it is built from nothing. But the reason why... Jesus says, mm. the glory mm. of the second shall surpass that of the first. Yeah. It's yeah. because the Son of God himself, God incarnate, was mm. to mm. enter that mm. temple mm. and in, minister in amongst habited. the congregate. Yeah. congregate. Amen. And yeah. I think that the temple. function of the temple as well was the presence of God among oh, God's yes. people. Mm. Hence, yes. in the most holy place, we had the Shekinah glory, mm. Mm. right on top of the Messi oh, yeah. seat. Yeah. But look at God this time in a human body, human temple. He is among Israel. He is among Israel, but Israel silences the very glory mm. of the temple. <laughs> we'll be taking a short break right now. Please do join us after the break. When we come after the break, we'll be discussing the real incident okay. of the destruction of Jerusalem. And we want to look at the warnings mm. that God gave them, mm. where they listened to, mm. what were the consequences mm. of not listening, mm. and how much profit was given to those who chose to listen. Please don't go away. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome once again. For nearly 40 years, after the doom of Jerusalem had been pronounced by Christ himself, the Lord delayed the judgments upon the city and the nation. Hmm. Wonderful was the long-suffering of yeah. God towards the rejectors of his gospel mm. and the murderers of his son. Mm. The long-suffering of God towards Jerusalem only confirmed the Jews in their stubborn impenitence, in their hatred and cruelty, towards the disciples of Jesus, they rejected the last offer of mercy. Yeah. Then God withdrew his protection from them and removed his restraining power from Satan and his angels. Mm -hmm. And the nation was left unto itself desolate. Amen. So we, we need to focus on the very fact that at the height of their apostasy, it was the rejection of the Messiah. Oh, yeah. And the writer says the great... Brother Maton Salah said it. Oh, yeah. It says the great sin of the Jews was their rejection of Christ. Mm. I just and then it continues to say the great sin of the Christian world yeah. would be their rejection of the law of oh, God, God, the foundation of his government in heaven and on earth. Yeah. Yes. Now this is where retributive justice Amen. and judgment mm. comes, comes in. in. Mm. And you know, when we look at this, they rejected Christ. Listen to what John says in John chapter one, verse eleven. He says, He came unto his own. This mm. is Israel. Christ comes unto his own, yeah. and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons and the daughters, even to them that believe in his name. Oh, yeah. They rejected Christ. They lost God's protection. Mm. Oh, yeah. It was all withheld. Jerusalem would be crushed yeah. mm. with the actual event that we are about to talk about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But now, the author projects something similar also in the last days. Oh, yeah. That in Christianity, yeah. they will reject the commandments of God, oh, which is the foundation of yeah. God's government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you look at the book of Revelation, yeah. we look at the scene. Where God literally says, hold your judgments on yeah. the four living creatures mm. that are holding the winds, yeah. that God may seal those. And in focus and in view, yeah. under attack in the book of Revelation in these last days, are the first four parts 
of the Ten Commandments, yes. mm. which are under attack. Yeah. So you see, they reject the Messiah. Yeah. This is Israel. And with Christianity, they reject mm. the law. Mm. Mm. And all of these things call upon retributive justice, which yes. is judgment. Yes. That's, that's but very fortunately, true. mercy is still open. Mm -hmm. Like it was open to ancient Israel, oh, yeah. it is still open to Christianity yeah. today. The, the grace of God without the law of God. Yeah. Mm. Mm cannot be of God. No, but true. there needs to be a balance because you cannot, you cannot destroy the foundation of God's throne. Each government has a, has a law. Yes. Without South, Africans, uh, South Africa's law, mm. we are in tatters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because somebody can kill me and get away with it. Yeah. Someone can eat me up or steal mm. from me and get away with it. Mm. So the law makes sure that the regulation of the kingdom and its, its administration is smooth. Yeah. The subjects of the kingdom are safe. You remove the law, it's, it's disorder. Yes. And we cannot say that grace does that to God's rule. No. Mm. Not and at that's all. the sin yeah. of modern Christianity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the sin. Dismissing the very foundation yeah. of God's authority. Mm. What is grace mm. if there's no law? Mm. Because, because, because the law necessitates grace. Yes. It's the transgression of the law that says you must die. Mm. It is the law that necessitates grace. Yeah. You remove the law, we have no need for grace. Yeah. <laughs> because we are living freely that's in that true. seriousness. That's, that's very true. You, you see, that, that's where it becomes so tricky. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, History will repeat. Yeah. Mm. Not, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm. So if we can study history very carefully, we'll know how to handle our, future, our present life and our future life. Yes, sir. Which our present actually gives us a platform to be able to prepare for the future. Yes, sir. You're not going to be able to repeat the same thing in yeah. the present if you've studied the history and see how God has been dealing with us. And we are told that the dealing of God with men is the same. Yes, sir. I mean, it's one problem of sin and then God has been dealing with it with using one method. So anyone that walks away from that method, of course, is going to see um, the, you know, the, the judgment that's going to come upon them and stuff. Now, when it's come to the Jewish nation, it's not everyone you know, that rejected Christ. Yes, sir. Because, I mean, uh, John chapter 8 speaks about there were some who believed in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus came at night, you know, and many others. So there were individuals, the minority actually accepted Christ, but the majority, yeah. these are the ones that we're talking about. It was only a, a group, a small, very small group of individuals who accepted him. But now Christ, after when he came, he came to the end of his mission, he looks at them and he says, I'm going to give you signs mm. that you're going to be looking. And he's speaking about, he's speaking to those who are, who are actually his. Yes. That in order for you to know that a Jerusalem is going to come down crumbling, mm. I want to give you the sign. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. Until to, uh, I'm going to just read a couple of verses. Okay. And it says that, when ye, uh, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of Daniel by mm. Daniel the prophet, mm. this long time ago, yeah. mm. Hundred of years mm. back then. So Daniel spoke about this. Yes. While it was chronicles, but they were not able to study history yeah. and prophets were pointing to this. So by Daniel the prophets, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Mm. Mm. Verse 16. Then let, uh, let them which are be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. So Christ says this is going to be the, the sign. Abomination of desolation. When you see it, it's time to escape. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I have got some good news. Yes, sir. Despite the destruction of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. which I want to apply to say, Jerusalem is an entity. Mm. In the Bible, they say, the soul that sins shall die. Oh, yes. Mm. That's an individual as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but look at the other angle. Mm -hmm. Not everybody in Jerusalem was destroyed. Oh, yes. Mm. Only those who believed and listened to the sign. The sign was... If you see the armies around, mm. it is time. Mm. Yeah. So something funny happened there. The soldiers come and surround. Mm. And then after a while, they want to retreat. Oh, yes. Yeah. On their retrieval, the Jews say, wow, what? Attack. Mm. Mm. They're following the enemy. And God's people knew the sign and they went out. Escape. Yeah. And Matthew then concludes it nicely. Mm. Now, the, the, the word that is nice there is God has a mission to save us all. He can. Mm. But if you choose not, that's you. 24, Matthew then says, and he shall send his angels mm. with a great sound. And what do the angels do? This trumpet shall be sound and you will gather all the elect. Mm. So listen to the good news. If you choose, you're going to be saved. Oh, yes. mm. If you don't choose, it's unfortunate. Mm. But there's still time. May you make amends and work with God. Oh, yeah. Mm. The writer also draws our, our attention to the leaders of the church. Yes. The mm. leaders, the priests. Now, 
the Lord records instructions in his word that yeah. when you see these things happening, mm -hmm. it is time for you to escape yes. and leave the city. Yes. Yep. And the priests say to the inhabitants of the city, run to the temple. Oh. Hey. When you are in the temple, hey. you will survive. Yeah. Hey. The temple will hey. not be hey. destroyed. Now, hey. the leaders are saying this to the children of Israel mm. when the army of Titus is even encompassing the exactly. city at that time, mm. which shows us the danger that we are in. Mm. Yeah. If we don't study the word for ourselves and rely on, on leaders, leaders, we shall fall hey, prey to the kings of the devil hey. oh, yeah. like the then Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Now let's look at this. The, the armies of Titus withdraw, yes. like Brother Nube yes. said. And then at that moment, the writer records yeah. that char she says at sunset, yeah. chariots of fire were seen on the clouds, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. chariots yeah. gathering for yeah. vehicle, oh, no. and soldiers were seen encompassing the city. Yeah. Then immediately the children of God said, this is a sign. Yeah. Yeah. We are ready for We're escape. Ready. Yeah. Yes. When the armies withdrew, those who chose to listen, obedience it paid. Oh, yeah. They went out Amen. of the city Amen. and hey. they were saved. Amen. And those who chose mm. to listen to the priests were bungled up in the temple. Oh, yes. Now let's discuss the mm. events that follow yeah. hey. when people choose mm. not to be obedient mm. and they run to the temple. Mm. Huh. As we have said, the leaders, the Bible says in Micah chapter 3, mm -hmm. it says leaders and prophets rebuked. Mm. In verse 9, it says, Hear this, you leaders of Jacob, you rulers of Israel, sure. who despise justice yeah. and distort all that is right. Mm -hmm. It says in verse 10, Who hold Zion with bloodshed, who build Zion with bloodshed and Jerusalem with wickedness? Mm -hmm. In verse 11, it says, Her leaders judge for a bribe, her priests teach for a price, and her prophets tell fortunes for yeah. money. Mm. So all those things, they, they, they were built under unbelief. Mm. And they put the destruction of Jerusalem. Yes. But it, it goes with many things inside of that. Because as we, as we see now, these are the end times. Mm. And the priests, the pastors, and mm. all the people who are saying they are in God's uh, 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 the throne, in the yeah. God's kingdom, yeah. in, in doing God's things. And God said, no, 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 these things are not happening in my way. Yeah. You're not doing, you're distorting things. You, you, uh, you, are, you, you put bloodshed. In fact, you have built things. It says here, Jerusalem was built in wickedness. Yes. Mm -hmm. So God was angry, isn't it? Mm. And things were there. But my brother has said a lot about the book as well as we are taking the chapter. The book cuts, it's, it's, it has a, a Bible history. Yes. Everyone will understand history, what's going on mm. as, as we go, because we must, the Bible has taught us to know the, the past yeah. okay. in order to know the where we are going, the future. Mm. So the, the book gives us that way of understanding uh, the Bible prophecy. What is it? Why people must read this book? Mm. Mm. You know, while you're still talking about prophecy, what this story is telling us, because remember, when he pronounces his judgment on Israel, he says here, if thou, in verse 43 of Luke chapter 21, he says, for the days shall come, shall, yeah. future yeah. tense, that's prophetic language, yeah. yes. for the days shall come upon thee, that your enemies will cast a trench around you, mm -hmm. and compass thee around, and keep thee in every side. Now here he's saying to Israel, this a day will come when this will happen as a judgment. Yeah. But when you, quote, when you go to Matthew chapter 24 verse 16, it says, when that day comes, now he's talking to those who believed that yeah. Jesus is the Messiah, yeah. the Christian sect. Mm -hmm. He says, then let them which are in Judea, when that day comes, flee into the mountains. Let him who which is on the housetop not mm -hmm. come down mm -hmm. and take anything out of his house. Mm -hmm. Neither let him which is in the field return back to, this, to take his clothes. And Woe unto them that are with child on, on that day and, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we see here, oh, sorry. So we, what we are seeing here is a judgment is pronounced. Yes. And God's children who are obedient to his prophetic word right. are told what to do yeah. by the time yeah. when the judgment is executed. Okay. My question is, if the followers of Jesus despised the prophecy at that time, they would have died with everybody Amen. in the yeah. temple. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Which really gives us, which brings us to the actual event. Oh, yes. Because history tells us that in 66 AD, yeah. 
Titus sent sisters, uh, sisters Galas, mm. and the troops of sisters surrounded Jerusalem. Mm. Oh, yeah. And it was at the time what you were talking about. Yeah. Instead of running away, the leader said, "Let's go into mm. the temple." Mm. And that's where all the calamity happened, yeah. with corpses all over the place. Yeah. The writer even says there was a time where Titus who felt yeah. pity for the nation, where mm. he did not want to destroy the temple. Mm. But because of the obstinacy of the Jewish people and the Jewish nation, he was forced to bring it down to ashes, mm. where there was no stone left around it. But historically, we are told that the surrounding happened in 1866, and then the actual destruction of Jerusalem happened in 70 AD by Titus. Oh, yes. Mm. The point I wanted to make, Sister Ngobe, on your question, what do we do by people who are led or misled by their pastors? The truth here is, Page 36 in this book, wonderful story. Mm. Every ray of light rejected. Mm. You reject on your own. Yes. You don't blame anybody. Read these things. They are written. Every ray of light rejected. Number two, every warning despised. Mm. It's you despising. Number mm. three, every passion indulged. You are indulging yourself in your mm. passion. Mm. Mm. Number four, every transgression of the law of God. What is it? It is a seed that you are sowing. Mm. And this seed will have an unfailing harvest. Oh, yeah. So you are putting yourself in a net. Mm. You are actually building your walls of destruction yourself. <laughs> and then this part here, it says, destruction of Jerusalem is a fearful and solemn warning mm. to all. Mm. Okay, as we draw to the conclusion of this, now, um, Titus, when Jerusalem is under siege, goes into the city and says to his soldiers, mm -hmm. don't attack the temple. Yes. Don't define the house of God. Yes. Here is a man who is considered a heathen. Mm -hmm. And he says to his soldiers, don't define the temple. <laughs> yeah. And he says to the leaders of the Jews, and yeah. the Jews in the temple, yeah. come, come out, out. Hey. so that hey. I don't destroy yeah. the house of God. Hey. If you hear what the writer says, she says, Titus, a man considered a heathen yeah. stood as the last mediator sent oh, yeah. by yes. God yeah. between the Israelites and God, mm. yet they refused mm. at that time. Yeah. The yeah. soldiers went in. Yeah. Part of the temple was bent. Mm. The most holy place was not bent. And Titus said, save, save the remaining part. Mm. Save it. Don't mm. bend it. Mm. And tried to remove the children of Israel. Mm. They, yeah. refused. they refused. At that moment, one of the soldiers gets his torch, mm. tries to see what's in the most holy place. Mm. And the whole building yeah. is engulfed. Mm. Sure. Anger was so much on the soldiers of Titus yeah. that they slew the Jews mm. that were in the temple mm. until Ish. blood ran from the temple yeah. steps like water. Mm. At that moment, the yeah. temple was defiled yeah. and a voice was heard crying, mm. Ichabod, mm. the glory of the Lord oh, has yes. departed. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Our Amen. closing remarks, my brothers. For me, I just want to say that... Um, you know, a, a false prophet, his role is to strengthen the hands of the evildoers. Mm. And, and when, when you're actually being, being strengthened in your evilness, that means that you're going to fall also into the destruction. Mm. So we have to be very careful examining those that we are following because if they are not leading us in the light of the word of the Lord, we're not going to be excused or exempted from the destruction that is going to come upon us. Yeah. What God has said will not fail. We need to assemble ourselves ready to do it or not. Yeah. Revelation chapter 14 verse 12 Here is the patience mm. of the saints Here are they that keep the commandments of God And here is the balance And the faith of Jesus mm. Another thing what God has said in his word Matthew chapter 7 verse 2 He says with what measure you meet It shall be measured to you again mm. Mm. As yeah. the sun of this world is setting Aye. We cannot begin to comprehend How much we owe God for the peace that surrounds us, mm. an opportunity to talk about his word, an opportunity to look for the gems in his word, yet we have not taken yes. advantage of that yes. those times. We fail to gather on the bright, hand, bright side of the hand. Someday we'll be compelled to gather on the dark side of the hand. Mm. That's why Prophet Habakkuk says, mm. let him who read it run, redeeming times, for yeah. days are evil. May mm. the Lord richly bless you as you ponder upon these words. In closing, we are going to ask Brother Nubia to pray for us. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you this morning for the privilege of your word. As there be destruction of Jerusalem, you desire that we come out. We praise you and thank you for the message. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.